Well, it's a very good morning to you and welcome to the show. My name is Joyce Mwandiwahiga and this is Full Circle with Joyce Karibuni Sana to the show, our first relationship Tuesday for the month. And today we're going to be talking about the story of restoration. That's right, a, a woman is going to be giving us her story of how she went through divorce, actually suffered depression, literally hit rock bottom. And she's going to be here sharing her story this morning. And then we're also going to be looking or talking about understanding your partner or your significant other. Do we really understand each other? Are there ways that we can avoid many of the different arguments that we often face in our relationships simply by better understanding our partners? This and so much more right here on Full Circle with Joyce. But just before I get started with the show, I want to read you something here by a guy named Friedrich. I'm going to call him Friedrich N because I can't pronounce his last name. But he says, it's not a lack of love, but a lack of friendship that makes marriages or makes unhappy marriages. Let me read that again. It's not a lack of love, but a lack of friendship that makes unhappy marriages. I'd be very curious to hear what our guests this morning have to say concerning this. And if this is your experience, or if you agree, the SMS line is double two triple nine. I'd love to hear from you this morning, even as we get started with the show. But for now, here is Janet Otiena with the song Asante kicking us off this morning. This is Full Circle with Joyce. Carry Busana to the show. Janet Tatiana with the song Asante, kicking off our show this morning right here on Full Circle with Joyce with me, Joyce Omondi Waihiga. Today is Relationship Tuesday, and we're going to be focusing on some of the different issues that we face in our relationships. In our very first segment, we want to hear about the story of restoration. Joining me on the show, I have Doreen. Is that right? Yes, yes Doreen Kanda. <laughs> uh, so good to have you on the show, Doreen. And uh, you're going to be telling us a bit about your story. Yes, definitely. Right? So you've been through a lot. You've been through divorce. You've been through depression. You've 
basically hit rock bottom at some point, but you're a successful businesswoman. Is that true? Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, we really want to just hear your story and be inspired by you this morning, you know, and hopefully you can encourage someone who finds themselves in a similar situation. So you are the owner of Party Pergola. Yes, Linens and Decor. Linens and Decor. Yeah, Party Pergola is a product of Linens and Decor. All right, yes. good for you. So yeah. tell us where your journey started with that. With the Party Pergola? All right, that started just after I got divorced. Uh, that was in 2011. Mm. And it was the idea that actually um, I was able to take on and work on as I was trying to heal and restart my life. Mm. So it's the first uh, wooden movable tent. Um, from my research, it's, uh, I've not seen it worldwide. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, I just saw a structure that was uh, somewhere permanent because there are pergolas all over, but they're permanent. Nobody had, had done, had made it movable. Mm -hmm. And I decided, okay, how do I make this movable? Because I was in the events industry already okay. at the time for six years. And I figured that that would be, uh, that would make for a very good tent. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's where Party Pegola started. Right. Yeah. And I think one of the things that makes your story successful is that you've been able to sort of rise from out of divorce because you started your business after going through a divorce. Yes. Um, yes and no. Okay. I started, I got into the events industry in 2005, five six. And uh, that time it was, I was doing deco mm -hmm. and linen and uh, the normal tents, tables, chairs. And then I was doing it in, in collaboration with my ex-husband, but I was the one who was uh, running the business. Okay. So once I got divorced after six years, that's when I started linens and deco. Because okay. the business couldn't continue since we had separated. Right. Yeah. Tell us a bit about your marriage. How long were you guys married for by the time you were divorced? Uh, six years. Six years. Yes. Um, I mean, at, at, at how, how was the marriage, you know, when you first met each other, was it, I mean, I'm assuming you came into it f like excited and, you know, butterflies or, I mean, was that your story or? Yeah, I came into it <laughs> ignorant. ignorant. <laughs> I was very, That's honest. yes, <laughs> very ignorant. I uh -huh. was very young. I was, um, 24 okay, wow. and, um, I was pregnant. So basically it was, uh, I got married cause I was pregnant. Really uh. it wasn't something that was planned okay. and I hadn't done my homework or even prayed, you know, or I wasn't ready. I was, yeah. I was in college, I was partying. So yeah. in the process of that got pregnant and he was, uh, he took responsibility and said, I'll marry you. Mm. And at the time I was thinking, uh, maybe l I can wait. We take care of the baby, then you know, get married later. But mm. then you know how uh, society is. Right. So my dad uh, felt that um, uh, no, he can't have a child outside of you know mm -hmm. wedlock. Mm -hmm. And of course, I I I also felt like yeah, it makes sense to have a family and raise the children in a family. Mm. But then during the marriage, it it was very rocky because uh, both of us were not ready. He wasn't, I wasn't, I, we were not mature enough for the marriage because there was a lot of uh, infidelity on his part. Mm. So that really... It, now while you're in the marriage? Yes, while I was in the marriage. So, and it started very early. So it was, I, I really became sad, mm. but I didn't know I was depressed. You know, stopped taking care of myself. I mm. think uh, back then I used to wear baggy jeans, hats, mm. you know, they have, you know, it was just, it, it just wasn't me. But it was, I think, in um, 2009 that I was unable to get out of bed, literally. So one morning I wake up and uh, I try to rem get my leg out of the bed and I can't. And I'm like, I'm trying, you know, and I can't. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? So I took my computer, which was on the side of my bed, and Googled, can't get out of bed, and I was shocked. Mm. You know, right there, I sh it's it depression. Up depression. And I'm like me depressed like how how is it possible but i quickly accepted because by this time i'd realized that i if i didn't help myself i would die mm. because despite the fact that i was here with a partner he he would leave in the morning leave me in bed come back find me in bed so i think even him he wasn't aware of what's going on mm. um so i felt if i don't help myself then who will so i googled shrink in Nairobi <laughs> for the first time shrink in Nairobi, and, and at least came on picked up um uh, one who was uh, in the uh, uh, K Kenya, anyway, I can't even remember mm -hmm. exactly the place. But when I went to see him the following day, and he told me you have to come and see me, 
he admitted me immediately. So wow. I was in hospital, I think, for a week or two. It's a bit hazy, but I, I, I had to be put on drugs and everything, exercise, and finally, but when I got out of it, and he told me, like, when you get out of this, if your husband doesn't change, you will leave him. And mm. that's the first time I came into face to face with the possibility of leaving my ex-husband. Yeah. And indeed, when I got out and I realized I was not the best mother, because I mean, I'm locked up in the room. I don't want to see anybody, including the children. That doesn't make me of a, a very good mother. At the time, I had two daughters. Okay. So that's when I decided, as we went on, I, I told my mom what was going on, because a lot of the time, you know, we told uh, the marriages between the two of you should not go, go telling everyone. Right. Um, and speaking to my in-laws about it, they kept on coming back to say, you know, you take uh, pray, pray, you know, you know, like, there's a time he hit me, they told me you should have run away, so I felt that I this couldn't... This is now your, like, his side of the family yes. telling you you should have run yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, so I felt, wow. you know, it's time for me to tell my side of the family. So I told them, and they were like, okay, now we know what's going on. So I told my mom, and I'm, I, I'm thinking of leaving because I don't see him changing, because they've, every year there was a different woman mm. uh, to deal with. Every year there was something different to deal with. And... I am the type of person who believes in uh, getting up. If you know, w if you fall down, you get up, you dust yourself up, and you move Keep on. Going. So I kept on forgiving and believing that things would get better. Mm -hmm. And up to today, I still believe that uh, you should always dust up. You, I mean, you should move on, forgetting the past, and you know, and, yeah. and believing in, in a positive uh, future. But then in this case, that wasn't the case. It kept get getting worse. Um, to to the point where I decided, you know what, I've had enough. Um, it's time for me to leave. And the day I left was really dramatic, you know. Oh, so I normally tell that. ladies not to wait until it becomes really dramatic for you. Ah. So if, if you see there's no change and you've prayed, don't just keep praying. Like, you need to take action at some point. Right. Yeah. What do you mean by the day you left? It was very I, it dramatic. It was very dramatic. I, I actually... This is not after, sorry, this is after you've completed um, treatment? Yes, this was after I've completed treatment. And you know, the thing with depression just doesn't go, go in a yeah. day. You, you're still, you know, working on it, but this time you know that, you know, you have to change things. Right. So this time I, I got, I just got fed up, you know. And, uh, I think there was another incident of a different uh, woman. And, and when I asked him about it, he he got angry. So as these are like at least six women in the time that he you guys were married. Well, I can't even count. I, I, I've yeah. not. It's and and it's not like I would really even meet them. Some I met, some I didn't. Some it was messages, you know. So, but it was and even though there was nobody, there was you know when when you're not focused on your relationship, you really won't. We not you. You're not there. Mm -hmm. So you're always feeling like this person is really not here. Mm -hmm. You know. So, yeah, so that's, <laughs> that I, I think that that night I left, luckily the children are not there. Okay. So I told him I'm leaving and I'm packing up and, and I'm going. And then like, oh, go, you know, like, you go. Huh. So I'm like, oh, really? And I got so annoyed, like, after six years of, yeah. you know, of all this, and I took a bottle and I, I smashed the TV. That was, <laughs> that was wow. yeah, so I was really livid, you yeah. know, but I left that night. You know, and I called my sister, and I just went, and I and I never looked back. Wow! Yeah. Have you guys spoken ever since? Yeah, yeah. We we speak. We because of the children. Mm. I do my healing journey has led me to the point where I'm I'm okay with him. Like I I don't have anything. I forgive him mm -hmm. because I came to realize it's not it's people are different, and and we are all broken. You mm -hmm. know. So if we don't realize our brokenness, it's easy for us to break other people. So with that in mind, and of course, uh, God, the one thing that God says is to forgive. Because mm. if you do not forgive, really, you will carry bitterness for a very long time. And I don't think I'll be here today, remarried with, to a wonderful guy if I hadn't forgiven mm. and moved on. But I took time. Immediately I left him, like a month to, I really shut down my social life. Mm. I stopped because at the time I was clubbing, I was drinking, I was smoking, mm. I was using all these things to run away from, you know, the pain. But I told God, you know, I've been, I'm so far from you now and I want to get back. Please mm -hmm. help me to get back to you. And in that process, I was able to 
quit all these things. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is I would really advise uh, women going through that is to abstain. You really need to abstain because God calls for, for holiness. You, there's no way you're going to heal if you're still going out with other men and you're just adding, you're piling on more trash and more trash and right. more trash. Right. So those are the things that really helped me to be able to heal. Okay. For four years, I was you know, taking care of my children, working on this new idea that today you know mm -hmm. has 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 uh, brought me in the you know in the events business mm -hmm. it's one of the leading uh it's, it's one of the leading uh, tents mm -hmm. in the market right now because it's new it's different it's rustic okay you know i want to take you back a bit to talk about so you were struggling with depression while you were in the marriage yes um and then you wake up one day and you decide that you're walking out yeah what happened afterwards? How were you able to sort of numb yourself to come to that decision? Were you, was it about a matter of numbing yourself to come to that decision? And after the divorce, did you sort of find yourself almost slipping back? Or how did you handle that? Um, what happened is, I think it, it happened at a pivotal point of my life. I, I had just turned 30 and I started asking myself questions like, okay, when I turned 60, how will my life be like? And uh, the way my life was at the time was not how I envisioned to grow. You know, I had seen my parents together for mm -hmm. years. And I'd never seen my dad raise a hand on my mom mm -hmm. or cheat on her. You know, he was always there loving. So I had that perfect uh, mind, memory in my mind. And I knew what I, was, what I was in wasn't okay. So it was based on that fact and I looked at my children, I'm like, what example am I going to be giving them? Because if, if, if this is how they grow, that's, how, that's what they'll get into. And that's what actually propelled me to get, I, I got fed up. Okay. I was like, there has to be better. And if there's no better, it's okay. Let me be part of the t statistics, you know. Because one of the things that propels people is fear. But luckily, my, parent, my fear first of um, finances, mm -hmm. you wonder like, okay, if I leave this man, how, how will I, I you know, sustain? Then you fear the society. What will people say? You know, those are the two main things. And those are the two main things I had to deal with. So the first one uh, for, the, um, for cash, at least since I was doing something, I knew I could sustain myself. And secondly, we had started building, you know, we had put all our money to build mm -hmm. a house uh, in Karen, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, uh, just after Karen. And, and I decided I'd rather not get into that house than get into that house and sad because I'd envision myself in that house and I'd see myself sad and I'm like no I don't want to be part of those people who drive a Mercedes and live in a nice house but they are unhappy right. so that I, I had made up my mind and my parents had taught me from a young age that money isn't everything what matters most is your happiness then in fear of what people will say I was like I'm crying every day mm -hmm. where are all these people who are crying with me. I'm like, no, no one is here to cry with me. I'm the only one crying. Right. So I was like, you know what? I don't care. I called yeah. my mom. I explained to her. I told her I can't do this anymore. She told me we will support you. I understand. I think it's important for us to say that, and you've talked about God, so I believe faith is part of your yes. life. And so you'd agree with me that, you know, it's not that we're advocating for divorce no, or anything. No. It's just you, you got to a situation in your relationship yeah. that things were just that bad, yeah. but we're not here advocating for divorce. No. But in light of what you've been through, as we get ready to wrap up um, this segment, maybe you can tell us, you know, when you look back at your life and how you got into the relationship, mm -hmm. how you got into, got pregnant, got into the marriage, mm -hmm. and then what it ended up being, maybe you can tell us a bit, you know, what would you, if you could go back in time, what would you, what would you tell yourself? Or, you know, what lessons can you do? Obviously, now you have children, and yeah. that's a blessing from God, yeah. even out of a difficult yeah. relationship. But, you know, for a young woman who's watching you right now, she's in college, she's clubbing, she's smoking, she's going out drinking with her buddies. Yeah. And maybe there's been situations where she's almost found herself mm. where you were, you know, yeah. those many years yeah. ago. Um, what would you tell someone like that who's watching right now? Um, I, there's one thing I tell people. If my ex-husband and I back then were, had put God as first in that, you know, because I think we would have survived. Mm. One of the reasons marriages fail is because of the lack of fear of God. Because if you don't fear God, you, you're capable of doing anything yeah. from cheating to 
getting beating, angry, yeah. you know, to beating, to you're capable of basically anything. It's the fear of the Lord that actually stops people from, you know, going into the extreme, other extreme. But also at the same time, I advocate for people getting to know themselves mm -hmm. and it starts within. And you, you're not going to know yourself. I actually came to discover myself more in the four years that I was alone than before because before I got married I was clubbing, you know, I was really not focusing on me and improving myself and mm -hmm. growing myself. So as a young woman, I'd, I'd, I, I advise, just get to know yourself, stop. Yes, it's a lot of fun to go out, it's a lot of fun to do all these things, but you need to stop and ask yourself, who am I, you know? Mm -hmm. Who am I? Get to know who, who, why you're on earth and what do you want? Right. Yeah. Wow, Doreen, thank you so much for sharing your story. And it's so encouraging, I think, for many people who've been through difficult relationships to see, even depression, to see that, you know what, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. There's hope. You can pick yourself up, as you've been saying, and go on and, you know, live a happy life, have a successful business. Yeah. So kudos to you and all the best to you as you continue. Thank you very much. Um, guys, we're going to be back right after this short break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about do you actually understand your partner and i think doreen's story is going to segue very nicely into that next discussion this and so much more right here on full circle with joyce i'll be back right after this Hey there guys, welcome back to the show. My name is Joyce Simone Diwaihiga and this is Full Circle with Joyce. Now before I move on with uh, the rest of our show today, I want to let you know, you know, do you, have you guys heard of a fruit called pomegranate? A lot of people can't even say it. It's pomegranate. <laughs> well, Dettel Eventon has a new fragrance and uh, I'm going to be sharing a bit more about that during this week. So look out for that but for now i want to introduce my next guest his name is victor salamba he's a familiar face here on the show particularly on relationship tuesday we've now coined his his phrase have a meeting with yourself okay <laughs> <laughs> victor welcome back to the show well, thank you so good much. to have you thank today we want to talk about understanding our significant others yeah. and um you know all of us want to be seen we want to be heard mm -hmm. we want to be understood we want our significant others to say you know what i hear you i get it maybe even you're right like mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes yeah. you just want to see someone say you are right and mm -hmm. i am wrong um why do you think in relationships you know when it's supposed to be a coming together of two minds mm -hmm. why is it that it almost seems that we're so anxious to have this you know so I do, do we call it validation really yeah. of of our opinions of our answers why is that you know we all have a need to be accepted mm -hmm. we all want to be accepted somehow and um the danger of the relationship is that you always believe that the person you're getting um to get married for example we have a general assumption that they'll get us from the very beginning mm. and the danger this is where the difference between dating and marriage comes in you see in dating people tend to accept you because they have more motivation. Mm. In marriage, people accept you less because the motivation has gone down. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's important during <laughs> dating to be very clear that does this person really get me or is it just because we're having a good Saturday afternoon? Right. You know, it's just because things are, are working. If exposed to stress, will she really get me or will he really get me? Right, you and know? that's, I mean, uh, our previous guest just now, her, that was sort of her experience because yeah. yeah. she found herself pregnant mm. and then ended up in the marriage just because she felt you know, where else am I supposed to go? Yeah, because, like, but that's actually, um, it's good she's been able even to be honest about it. It's because I normally had advice people that if you're pregnant and not yet married, wait first, mm. give birth, then think there, um, thereafter. Mm -hmm. Because it's very easy for you to get into any marriage simply because of the situation that you're in. Right. And you're thinking, let's just run into it, you know, things will work out as, as you continue. Mm -hmm. Marriage never works itself out as you continue. It doesn't. It's not. You can never have marriage on autopilot. You know, at the, we just began and we'll, I'll figure it out as we go. You'll get me, I'll get you. No. Mm. It's a daily responsibility. Yeah. You wake up in the morning and like, now, today, I must choose to get her. And that's why we normally say that in marriage, even the aspect of love, love is not even a feeling it's in a uh, marriage. It's a conscious, deliberate choice. Right. Because the days you look at your partner and wonder... I'm not that in love with you right now. Where was I? <laughs> 
<laughs> what were we thinking? Well, right. You know, <laughs> and they still expect you that day to show up. You right. know, they expect you to show up that day. And so being able just to navigate those different seasons is what is very key. I think you've raised a, a, an interesting point to, as far as for those who find themselves pregnant out of wedlock, yeah. you know, to, to hold off and wait. But what would you say to the guy who says, you know what, but maybe I want to marry her so that she can have, you know, my health benefits or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that is that in a is that a noble reason so that you can attach, you know, health insurance, health benefits and whatnot? I don't think so, because um, I've always said children are like tourists. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, they come to your house, they spend your resources, and they go. Yeah. I did that to my to my mom. My kids will do that to me also. Yeah. They'll spend my money and and go. And I must be aware when I'm getting married to think that is it about the kids? Mm. No, marriage precedes children. I must think and think. By the way, these kids will grow. This pregnancy will come to an end. Yeah. The health benefits won't be perpetual. She won't be pregnant perpetually throughout the marriage. <laughs> that time she stop being pregnant. <laughs> then things begin to become real at that right. time. So it's good for both parties to take a break and think, let's finish this process first and think, do we really want to do this now? Yeah. Yeah. Let's not be high on something else. Do we want to do this now? At times you want to protect yourself so much. At, you know me, I'm a church goer. It's not mm. a good point that I got pregnant out of wedlock. You know, I'm the worship leader. Mm. All those things, you know. You Better a broken relationship than a broken marriage. Yes. Just yeah. wait. Yeah. You know, at the beginning of the show, I read a quote um, about that it's not a lack of love that breaks that makes unhappy marriages, mm -hmm. but it is a lack of friendship. Yeah. Can you talk to us a bit about how, you know, understanding in, in relationships, understanding your partner is so linked to mm -hmm. friendship. If you guys have sort of developed the values, you know, that keep you guys together as friends so that, you know, after your kids have gone, you know, what is it that is keeping you two together? Friendship actually is key for any marriage to last. You must ensure the person is your friend. Mm. What happens is that during dating, we, f we try to pull things apart. We try to separate and say, this is my lover, this, this is my friend. Mm. Once you're in that line, you're walking a dangerous path. They must come in one package. That's a buy one, get one. You get this, this person is your lover and your friend. They must come to, they must be. Because if at all I have a conflict maybe with my wife, if I begin from a place that she's my friend first, mm. we have an easier way to solve it. Mm -hmm. If I begin by, even if I have anything, if I have maybe impressive um, statements for, a, uh, for, for a, you know, now nowadays you have passwords on everything, you know, mm -hmm. passwords on everything, eye scanner, <laughs> lenses, everything. You know, <laughs> if I don't have money to you, did I marry my enemy? I married my friend. <laughs> right. It's easy for me to begin from a discussion of that. This is my friend, then she must know that maybe I own land in Roy. Uh -huh. I have this amount in my bank account. I have this because she's my friend. But you see, the absence of friendship now makes me want to bathe with my phone, wants me to hide, <laughs> you know, to hide my things. You hide sleep my, with yeah, it here. You sleep with it, you know. You know, people run out of the bathroom as though it's going to be an accident. They run at high speed to cover their phones because okay. the guy forgot the phone. Why? This is not my friend. Mm. So even when you are talking, you'll fight with your friend, you'll fight with your enemy differently than how you fight with your friend. <laughs> is that what it, I mean, one of the, the phenomena that we're seeing now is people who've been married for 20 years, mm. 30 years, 40 years even, all of a sudden one day wake up and decide that they're divorcing. Yeah. I mean, what have you seen? Because you, you're a relationship coach, mm -hmm. you've counseled, I'm sure, many couples. Yeah. Yeah. What, what explains that? What are you seeing in relationships that are becoming such pitfalls that you can advise us to be looking out for? You see, um, the best relationships have the best managers because relationships mm -hmm. are supposed to be managed. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't manage what you don't under understand. So it's coming out of your space and choosing to understand your partner through their transitions. Because if you got married now, in the next 10 years, your husband will be so different. Mm. And you see, if you don't journey with him through his transitions, you'll be left at the guy you met last year. You'll start saying the guy has changed, but mm. he has transitioned. So I must take time also to get out of my space and look at my wife and think, where is she now? If we got married in our 20s, now we are in our 40s, what is the difference? Right. And it should be expected. I mean, yeah. you can't expect someone to stay the same. They don't stay the same. But you see, now we have a fixation. Mm. The person who you met that day, who you fell in love with, is where you stay. We never move from there. We don't, we, we, we don't move from the big weddings. We stay at the big weddings. Mm. We stay there. Mm. We forget that actually the, the real job begins the next morning. Right. That's when I realize that, okay, she's not going back. <laughs> yeah. She's here for a long time. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, now what do we do with this? And the problem is that when you lack understanding, the older you get, 
the more you forget what to do with your partner. Yeah. I've seen people looking at their wives and wondering uh, how was she talked to again? Was I, did I used to hold her head? <laughs> was it her hand? Was it her feet? What did I used to do suddenly? Because you've taken too much time growing apart, not following them as they transition. Right. Yeah. So in terms of understanding our partners, what are some of the things that we can do, particularly as far as communication is concerned? You'll find that a lot of couples are almost afraid of, we have this thing where you're afraid of expressing exactly what you feel, mm -hmm. even though this person should be your best friend. Yeah. But it's like we can't express what we're actually feeling. Mm -hmm. So we just end up nunaing. You know, for like weeks and it just builds over and over and over. And then you find non-verbal communication mm -hmm. sets in and it's just attitudes and passive aggressiveness. How can we actually begin to be proactive at understanding our partners mm -hmm. and helping them understand us as well? Um, first and foremost, I'll say something that is so, so cliche, first of all, is of course, I must understand myself as a person. Let's start from there. But two, I must remember this, that before my wife was my wife, she's a woman from the core. Mm. Before I am who I am, I am a man from the core. Our communication lines vary as heaven varies from the earth. For example, guys communicate with headlines. You know, if I tell a guy, ile nini kwa ile nini imefanya nini atasema eh. You know, and the guy got it, you know. So, it's true. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, and women love details. Uh -huh. Yeah, women love d details. If my wife asks me how how was your day, if I tell her it was fine, that's what I'm, she does. You have to just hear. She'll be wondering, "Ai, what is it fine?" <laughs> to be fine is a good answer. But how she wants to know, again, consciousness at 6 or 2. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. so it's good to understand that from the core we are different. Women love a lot of information. Men give, the, men give headlines. But yeah. also, find also the space they are in. Men have their own different ways of addressing the um, issues than women. A woman can wake up at 2 in the morning and talk. You can wake up at 2 and begin a story like you are awake the whole time. The guy must load. Mm. So the, this guy is loading. You woke up at two. Now I want to tell you something. The guy's like, ah, <laughs> you're trying to pick up where he is. I don't know where he is. So to understand that we are different from the core. Yeah. The mind of a woman works universally. Everything is connected. All things are connected. To a man, it's not universal. To a man, it's compartmentalized. But okay, Victor, you're a dude. Yeah. I'm just gonna ask you as we get ready to go on this break right yeah. now. Yeah. You've seen. You've counselled a lot of people. Yeah. You're a relationship coach. You're mm. married. Mm. I mean, women, we're not that difficult to understand, are we? Um, we'll go on the spot, by the way. Should I answer now or later? <laughs> 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 you know that my, that my wife is watching. Your wife is watching. It's, it's good okay. to be Now, 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 we're going to We're going to give Victor a break <laughs> and actually take a short one right now. And we'll be back in just a few minutes. We're going to continue with him. And I'll be inviting your questions. Uh, the SMS line is double two. Triple nine. I can see some questions already coming in. We're going to be sharing those with Victor and hearing out his opinions. This and much more right here on Full Circle with Joyce. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. This is Full Circle with Joyce with me, Joyce and Wendy Wahiga. We're sitting here with Victor Salamba, uh, our resident relationship coach, talking about understanding our partners and our significant others this morning. And, um, you know, <laughs> uh, before the break, I was teasing Victor. Just to, to, I'm trying to tell for us, ladies, we can't be that difficult to understand. But I think one of the biggest things in relationships, Victor, is body language. And maybe even for women, we don't get men's <laughs> body language um there's a question here from someone who's saying um hi full circle with joyce hi joyce i need advice if a lady is more financially stable than a man and the lady keeps supporting this man but it's like the man has no time for the lady is it worth waiting to be married by this man i mean um i think that lady should come for prayers <laughs> very special prayers at that much because um you know you can't pay someone to love you yeah. And it's like she is paying this guy to love her. So she's investing the money, investing the money that the guy can respond with uh, love. Mm. If you already, first and foremost, that's a wrong premise. Because mm -hmm. when you start supporting a man financially, you support a man financially who has a plan. Mm. And he's not a promissory note that the plan will mature vision 20 never. No. <laughs> What is the plan that is working? <laughs> yeah. If the guy has just a plan in the air, uh -uh, please. Mm -hmm. 
run quickly and fast. Run and okay. yeah, run quickly run and very quickly. fast. Yeah. All right. Um, someone here says, you know, going back to the topic about friendship, mm -hmm. someone here says, good morning. My name is Gladys from Nakuru. I've been married for five years with one child. My marriage is starting to fall apart. My husband is not my friend. He keeps petty secrets from me, which makes me unhappy. I'm not happy. We argue a lot. He doesn't listen to me at all. And I'm very tired. I feel the love is not there anymore. And I'm just tired. Sometimes I feel like leaving. But his family is always on his side and they will always side with him and blame me for everything. Um, first and foremost, that is almost obvious mm. that there is no family that will take sides with the other person. Mm. That's most impossible. If um, my wife has a problem with me and goes to my mom, of course my mom will take my side. Right. So first of all, your in-laws are not the first people to deal with your issues. Never go to them for any issues. Mm. Secondly is, um, you know, try be his friend. Men are strange. You know, men fear judgment more than anything else. Mm. And women fear shame. It's the differences of that we that we have. You see, when a woman, when her daughter gets pregnant at 16, a woman will say that you have ashamed us. Mm. Eh? Like she's the one who's carrying this child. Mm -hmm. You see, guys will ignore. But men fear judgment. And when a man fears judgment, if you want to get information from him, disarm him by showing that you're not judging him. If he sees judgment, men have a gift of changing stories midair. <laughs> It's a gift. It's a supernatural gift. A guy will begin talking <laughs> about going to town and how that story changes to he was going to the airport. You don't even understand. Because he said, I was going to town. Then you're like, what? He said, no, not town. Yani town. Yani Kericho town. Not downtown. That other town. So wow. th that's how guys are. So disarm him. <laughs> yeah, then he'll speak. Okay, that's an important lesson for us then to learn. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, they say when you're trying to get something, you need to understand mm -hmm. what the weaknesses, what the strengths of your opponent, if you will, yeah. are. So you don't just march into an argument and, oh, na leta moto na jamata area mewaka moto. Oh, the first instinct any guy has is to defend himself. Mm. And at times men defend themselves by lying, which is a bad thing. Yeah. But the instinct. So disarm him. Gladys disarm that one. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another thing about understanding your partner yeah. or your significant others we're talking about today. This is an interesting text. Uh, hi, it's Carol from Ruero. I'm 18 years old and I want to ask, when is the perfect year to get married? Because my boyfriend keeps on telling me we get married next year. And she says, please help me. She's 18 years old. I mean, is there something she should be questioning about her I've, boyfriend? Like, why the rush? I have two questions. One, how old is he? Mm -hmm. That's a good first question to ask. Secondly, um, what is your plan in life, independent of this man? Mm. Because you can't start at 18 planning for a marriage. You see, because um, how sure are you that this guy knows what he's doing? What he's running away from? What are you running away from to think about marriage at 18? Mm. Because if you enter marriage at 18 with nothing, no education, no job, nothing then there's a possibility you're walking yourself into something you'll regret in a few years. So you think one of them is running, one or both of them is running away from something? I believe they're both running away from something. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Carol, I hope that helps you out uh, this morning. Um, good morning, I'm Lavinda from... Lavinda, I have been in a relationship for quite some time. The problem is my boyfriend is full of excuses. He loves football and his friend's company. He doesn't create time for me unless I force him to. He takes hours before replying texts. I feel like giving up, but I love him so much. What do I do? This is a problem that a lot of women face. You know, like, it's like, Futandio mpango akando, wakwanza, and then there's maybe other babes in the picture. But like, you know, women really struggle understanding Men, okay, fine. We understand men love their sports and mm -hmm. everything, but surely, so you create time for your mama. Now, I'm going to give her very simple advice, <laughs> and we're giving all the women out there who are listening. We have different needs, men and women. Mm -hmm. For example, women love free flowing, com um, free flowing, open communication. Right. Men love friendship. When a man marries a woman, he marries her because not only is he seeing a future with her, he's seeing a friend in her. Mm. What happens when, when you get married? Stop being his friend. What does being his friend mean? Enter into his world. Mm. Enter into his world. You are more important to him than his friends. Don't criticize the football. Mm -hmm. No. In watch fact, research about the football. Tell him, when, when do we watch football? Yeah. When, when, you know, when you're watching football, don't ask him, but oh, how many more minutes? <laughs> sit in his world. When you sit in his world over time, men are more authentic when they're doing what they love to do. Mm -hmm. She'll see parts of him she has never seen. And you see, she goes home with him at the end of the day. Right. 
Yes. That and is. so if you, if you, because a lot of women will do that when they're dating, because mm -hmm. you're trying to show him you're cool, mm -hmm. you're with him, but then suddenly you get married and then you, you stop all that. And you see, that's why the guy gets thrown off. Yeah. Because he married you because he thought you were cool enough to understand that he likes watching football. You are cool with the fact that love playing uh, golf. Now you're married, you let him to, to go play golf by himself. Mm. If your husband has a hobby or your boyfriend has a hobby, understand that that is his world. Enter into his world. When you enter into his world, it's easy for you to displace all other friends. Mm -hmm. That's what my wife did. Displaced all my friends. <laughs> all of them. They all got deep. So they all got to this place. They realized, okay, we're just the two of us. Right. But you know, she entered my world and I felt more comfortable now. I was right. like, okay, she's here. We're watching football. After football, she has me. Yeah. All the time she needs. Yeah. I am there. Football is 90 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You're fighting for 90 minutes. Imagine. <laughs> yeah. So it's not that men are afraid to call women their best friends. No. They actually want to. They actually want to. Okay. Yeah. All right. Someone here says, hey, Joyce, I'm Jerry. My husband always plays the victim each and every time we have an issue and ends up shifting all the blame on me. How can I deal with this? So she's not understanding her partner in the sense of he's not, you know, stepping up to take part in his blame in an argument, for example. Again, I go back to di disarm the fellow. Men must be disarmed. Mm -hmm. Men have a unique gift of lying, <laughs> a unique gift <laughs> of changing stories. It's important that she takes time to think, how do I disarm this guy? First of all, when you have any argument, how do you disarm him? Start by accepting me, I've done this and this. Don't even ask him what have you done. You start saying what you have done. Uh -huh. The moment you make him look like he's the one who's bad. No men have a mindset mm -hmm. that they're always doing wrong things. <laughs> I say if, if you tell your husband, let's have a talk, he'll disappear for two weeks. <laughs> avoiding doing, the talk. You, but let me just give a tip. Actually, <laughs> never tell you we need to talk. Just don't even say it. They, <laughs> they get scared. He thinks, what have I done? So he'll take two weeks doing research. <laughs> I don't know what did I do? Who died? He's trying to find out. When he's sure he's clean, he appears. Uh, you, are, you are saying? <laughs> so when you are... <laughs> Disarm the guy, yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Let me read some of the SMSs that are coming in. Um, uh, wow. Hi, Joyce. Thank you so much. Good morning. I'm watching the show. Hey, I'm Shiko from Topper. The show is always lit. Um, to loving the show, I think you should bring Wahiga on the spot. Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> um, but someone else here is saying, actually a gentleman mm -hmm. who says, Hey guys, I'm John. I fought with my wife, but I'm the one who wronged her. Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you for mm -hmm. actually acknowledging that. And then he says, I have told her sorry and forgive me, but she has refused to forgive me ev even though she talks with Mr. Or I, mm -hmm. she has moved to rent her house and I'm very confused. I wish I could die the next minute. Hmm. The text is a little bit unclear, but definitely it's a, a person who has fought with his wife. I guess she, she maybe has someone else. But he's obviously very desperate to fix their relationship. Yeah, you know, um, when, you've, when the guy has wronged his wife, um, women don't take sorry as the end of the issue. Unlike men, men take sorry as the end of the issue. A woman wants to eat the issue, discuss the issue, that she can track in his heart the level of remorse and the level of him being apologetic. So he should be patient enough to journey with her through the journey of forgiveness because men at times make this mistake men we believe that women forgive like we do mm. you see because guys you know if i have an issue with some with a guy i'll tell him let's go have some let's go eat some lunch mm -hmm. by virtue we're eating lunch we are forgiving each other we won't, we won't talk about the issue mm. so guys believe that if i tell my wife story that she moves on with the story no mm. she doesn't stop at that a woman wants to get into the issue mm. she wants to walk with you emotionally through the issue that you wear her shoes then she'll be able to judge your sorry with genuine or not. Right. She won't just take at I'm sorry for me. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Give her the time she needs. Journey with her slowly. Okay. Another question. Hi, Full Circle with Joyce. Please ask this question. What advice would you give this couple that has been married for 20 years? The wife is drinking too much and leaving the man to take care of the children. And the man loves her that Hajawa Mpiga because he knows he can do something ugly when angry. Wow. 20 years married and the wife is drinking too much. The man is taking care of the children. Um, now, who doesn't understand who in that situation? I think uh, the, there has to be a bit of slowing down in this context because I think the person who's writing is assuming that the woman is actually wrong. And you can't assume that she's wrong. 
because if you are assuming that she's wrong, it's good to look at what is the genesis of her drinking. Did she begin drinking at the 18th year? If so, what happened to her to begin drinking? Mm. Is the drinking generational mm. also? Does she come from a family of drinkers? You know, mm -hmm. because that, that can be another issue. Mm -hmm. So it's good to look at the fact that is she frustrated in her marriage also? So don't assume that drinking is a form of medication. It's just a symptom. Right. So you shouldn't rush also to say that she's a bad mom, she's a bad mother, she's a bad woman. Ah, we slow right. her down and find out what is really the problem. Right. Yeah. What is the underlying issue? Yeah. There's a question here. Um, hey Joyce, I need to know whether it's a must to surprise your boyfriend or girlfriend, it could be husband or, or wife, mm. with gifts because I'm in a relationship and my boyfriend has never given me any gift, but I always gift him. This always ends up being, you know, a, 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 an issue with couples, right? You know, yeah. women don't understand, like, why aren't you giving me flowers? Why aren't you buying me chocolate? Why aren't you taking me out? And then the dude is like, but sinali parent, sinimeli pastima, maji. But talk to us about that. Um, discuss what you need. So things you talk about openly. Tell your partner, you know what? By mistake, just by mistake, buy a flower. Just by mistake, yeah, it's a must. Just by you know, <laughs> tell them to do this thing because there are also guys who never saw this happening. Yeah, there are guys who have true. never seen anyone buying a gift in their life. Mm -hmm. To him, love was coming home with Ungaya Ugali, that mm. was love. You know, so the guy comes home with a whole bale of ugali. He believes this is love now. Oh man, Nina, Nuna Juda, kwa mama. You know, ugali. I want flowers. So tell him, you know, so I'm to get a shati. You know, buy me a watch, buy me some, you know, something. Let the guy be aware, because right. the, the guy might have never seen. To him, love is food, <laughs> and he buys you food. And to him, he believes he's the best husband on earth. Right. He's buying you food. Yeah. Just let the guy know. I think that's an interesting point to get into because it leads us to talk about expectations mm -hmm. in a relationship. Again, another pain point when people don't understand each other mm -hmm. or understand their significant other's expectations. You know, I was once told that either you match your partner's expectations or mm -hmm. they will have to lower their expectations for you guys to. Is that true? Mm -hmm. How do you find that balance? I think that once you understand your partner's expectations, run with them. Mm -hmm. regardless of if they're meeting you as run with them because marriage is not for takers mm -hmm. marriage is for givers mm -hmm. and i must be willing to give continuously but now i must be willing to find out what does my partner expect from me also what is it what is what are the parameters that are logical that they expect from me for example um there are things that i know my wife expects from me out of instinct mm -hmm. yeah there are things my wife that i that my wife expects out of me from her information given to me so I must balance those things. I must know when do I apply instinct, when do I not apply instinct. For example, if you come home together the, the evening and we are both tired, you know, instinctively I know that she doesn't want to go to the, to the kitchen. Mm. I don't start expecting her to That's go to the, the kitchen. That's the day you want chapos, mm. you want how many things. Mm -mm. Those are the days you're okay to even drink tea. To chai in sour tea. <laughs> because, <laughs> because at that particular point, the expectation has varied also. Right. It's good to know what someone wants. If you're pregnant, tell your partner, I expect you to be with me at the delivery ward. Mm. It's good to say this, what I, I expect you to call me at least once a day, find out how I am doing. You know, put those things also, but also more is on what you do, mm. not what the other person does. Wow. Yeah. Victor, always a pleasure to have you on the show. We have a lot of questions. Unfortunately, cannot get b uh, through all of them at this moment. Mm. But I, I do hope you'd be willing to come back again and again. Um, so thank you guys so much for all of your feedback. We do need to begin wrapping up the show. And so taking us to the end, here is Kush Tracy. She has her brand new song. It's called God is in Control. Kush Tracy, of course, is one of us here at Switch TV. She hosts Chatspot, uh, which runs a weekday evening so here is her song i believe uh for the first time on switch on maybe not switch tv but at least on full circle uh, i'll be back right after this Father, never let me go never never ever ever no 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 god don't you let me go as i walk through the valley of the shadow of death shadow of death I shall fear no evil, I shall fear no people, eh, eh. Nilikuwa niki tanga tanga, inakuna niki randa randa, sikujua nilichotaka, niki tafuta siku bata.
when I kneel down and pray. Open me eyes, get me feeling okay. Listen to the words of the Most High King. Solution have to come in my life once again. I say fire, fire band day for the negativity. Hey. Fire band day hey. for the bad mentality. Fire band day if they wanna see you fall. A fire band day if they wanna see you crawling. For all the grace and the favor. Come and see where we sing it with us. I take come and see the cheddar. Can walk and the mute can talk. Eh, eh. Yeah. He's the father of the fatherless, the father of the powerless, the father of the hopeless. Yes. Don't you sit there and doubt him. He's the king of all kings, provider of all things, creator of all things. Don't you sit there and Well, guys, this is it. This is the end of Full Circle with Joyce this Tuesday. I thank you guys so much for all of your feedback, for tuning in, your questions. There's so many SMSs here. Um, again, we're going to continue trying to tackle all of these questions as we go along with the show and with the season. But for now, I just want to thank my guests for being here this morning. And also, as I mentioned earlier, as I teased a little bit, we're going to be looking at a new product this week. It's called Dettol Eventone from a Granite. And I'm going to be sharing uh, more about that. And perhaps I'll even be giving away some gift, gift hampers by the end of the week. So make sure you keep it locked right here on Full Circle with Joyce. And uh, until tomorrow, would you guys have yourselves a wonderful day? I'll see you uh, at the next show. <laughs> Ciao.